Kraken Home Ice is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross. Always in your corner. Dan Bilesma looking for his first win. It goes high. Win number one. Look at Groovy looking around, looking around, gets the trapper out, makes the stop. The Kraken look for their second win on this three-game road trip. Big shot, he scores! A 7-3 win over the Nashville Predators. Great pass, McCann's in, in front, that's hockey, baby! Jordan Everly! It's a 6-4 victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. It's a beautiful Saturday night in Seattle. The Kraken have a key divisional matchup in the early season. Lapka in front. Decord says no on Michael Backlund. Great stop by Joey Decord. Stevenson scores! Chandler Stevenson, his first goal as a Seattle Kraken. The Kraken are enjoying a nice stretch of home games. They're in the middle of four straight at Climate Pledge Arena. Let's dive into a new episode of Kraken Home Ice now as we go one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Tanev, plus a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to bring all that great music to Kraken Home Games. And we'll sit down with head coach Dan Bilesma to talk about that successful road trip to start the season. Plus, the coach brings us a special guest. And what a way to finish up that road trip, huh? Nashville, seven goals by seven different players. The Kraken started the three-game trip with their first win of the season in overtime against the Wild. To start the game, the Wild had a 2-0 lead, but the Kraken battled back. In the second period, Matty Beneers takes a shot. Jordan Everly right there to shovel in the rebound. That was the captain's 300th goal. But Everly wasn't done and went on to knock in his second goal to make it a 2-2 game. In the third period, Minnesota took the lead and then Ty tied it back up. Ty Cartier scored, bringing the score to 3-3. With under four minutes to play, the Kraken trailed again, but Jared McCann came through clutch with a rocket. The tie game goes to overtime and then a shootout. In the shootout, Bjorkstrand and Everly both score and the Wild miss on their third attempt, giving the Kraken the W. The big win against Minnesota was also Jamie Oleksiak's 600th NHL game. The Kraken had a quick turnaround and faced Dallas, where they were met by a brick wall in the name of Casey Desmith, making his debut for the Stars. The Stars scored back-to-back -back goals with no answer from the Kraken, and the Stars go on to win it 2-0. Then, to finish up the road trip, the Kraken hit all the right notes in Music City. They started off strong in Nashville with two goals in the first seven minutes. The Predators tied it, but the Kraken go right back on top with a Brandon Tanev goal. Then, the Kraken crank it up in the third period, scoring four more goals. The Kraken showing off some team speed and winning it 7-3 to wrap up the road trip. There are a lot of benefits to taking an early road trip, especially when you have a revamped roster and a new coaching staff. Ariel Orsuto talked to the players about lessons learned on the road. And a 7-3 win over the Nashville Predators. First road trip in the books, and the Kraken escaped with four points in three games. We said it before the Nashville game, you win this game and you, you're having a good road trip. You're taking two or three on the road. You played in some tough buildings. You had some tough travels, but digging that one out and, and getting a, a win on the road is a good sign for the, the resiliency of the group and the determination of the group. It was also the first road trip for some of the new and developing Kraken players. A great chance to build some chemistry outside of the rink. I mean, it's fun. It's nice, uh, you know, being, being on the road with those guys, having the time. Uh, you know, you're always, you're always around your teammates. You're always around those guys, you know, going up to dinners and uh, hanging out with everyone and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely good bonding and uh, definitely a lot of fun for sure. It just kind of helps, you know, the confidence of a team and um, bringing guys together a little bit more. Some players around the league actually like playing on the road, giving them the opportunity to focus exclusively on hockey. But that's far from a unanimous opinion. 
Obviously, it's nice to be home and kind of in your own space, but um, you know, at the same time, you know, you're on the road and you know, there's less distractions, and um, you know, you're just at the hotel and you're at the rink. So, um, kind of depends on what guys like. I'm not. I wouldn't say I really have a preference one over the other. It's nice for a couple days, but after then, I miss being home, miss being with the family. We got two little ones at home, so don't want to miss anything with them, and uh, want to spend as much time with them. But yeah, I mean, it's nice to you know see different cities and climates and all that kind of stuff. Good thing for the Stevenson clan. The Kraken are in the midst of a five game homestand. Plenty of time to see the little ones at home. Brandon Tannehill, known for his annual iconic wide eyed headshot, has been on fire to start the season. Hockey has always been his passion, but growing up, he was overlooked. Chris Egan talks to the winger about his road to the league. Oh, Tanner scores! Across, they score! Big shot, he scores! It's Brandon Tanev who gets the goal. Now in his fourth season with the Kraken, Brandon Tanev has not only become a force on the ice, he's also one of the fan favorites. Now Tanev walks in, he scores! Tanev grew up in a hockey family in Toronto. Both of his brothers also play. My dad has uh, done so much for my brother and I, you know, my mom as well, you know, my little brother, you know, we're, we're a very close family, you know, two other brothers, um, you know, very passionate about everything we do, especially sports. And, you know, seeing my brother go through his journey going to college, um, getting an NHL contract, you know, having a successful career is um, light at, at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, it helped me get to where I am today. Tanev has spent endless hours on the ice, but he was also a multi-sport athlete growing up, competing in cross country, track and soccer. Anything you can do when you're young and develop yourself and just kind of go out there and have fun with your friends and, and enjoy all the different types of sports. I think it, you know, translates maybe to later down life playing hockey or whatever maybe sport you would have done or but also, you know, teaches you good life lessons, you know, how to be a good teammate, you know, good friend, um, stuff like that. Brandon's number one love was hockey, but at the age of 15, he was cut from his minor league team for being too small. Brandon didn't let that stop him from chasing after his dreams. I think it's never tough to step away from the game you love, um, especially being from uh, such a hockey crazy town in, in Toronto and, and being Canadian. But at the same time, you never lose love for the game. You're kind of still watching it, you know, following it from afar, even though you're not maybe involved in it. But, you know, when the opportunity came around, I was fortunate enough to you get a chance to play again, and, and when that opportunity comes, you need to take advantage of it. After junior ice hockey, Tanev went undrafted. So instead of heading to the NHL, he played at Providence and helped the Friars win their first ever national championship in 2015. Tanev, he scores! Nearly 10 years later, and Tanev is busy trying to bring the Kraken their first Stanley Cup. Tanif enjoyed his time in Winnipeg and Pittsburgh, and he's loving life in Seattle. It's uh, such a great city. Fans are, if not the best, or some of the best I've ever been, you know, around. It's uh, one of those places where, wherever it is, it's basketball, it's football, it's baseball, it's hockey. Everyone is so involved. The people are great here. It's one of those places you you like to be in. Tanif, short-handed a shot. He scores. Turbo time. Seattle fans simply call him Turbo. In Latin, Turbo means spinning. Turbo also means super, accelerated, and ultra. But how does Brandon define turbo? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I think you, you hit the nail uh, on the head there with all those different uh, terms, but I mean, it's just one of those things where it's stuck, just kind of always buzzing around and, you know, humming, I guess, is a good way to put it. Um, but, you know, a lot of energy, you know, fun to enjoy most times and, you know, just go out there and just kind of be yourself. He's been a treat to fans in Seattle, but Turbo also likes to play tricks, especially when it comes to photo day. With Halloween fast approaching, Tanev's spooky headshots have become a tradition like no other. There was no intent. Um, it was one of those things where we took a picture at Media Day in, in, in Pittsburgh, and then um, everyone was asking me, like, do you want another one? I'm like, no, I'm sure it was fine. I didn't see it. And then obviously it kind of went viral and blew up. Um, so it's one of those things where everyone's enjoying it now. And um, so you kind of stick with it, and it's a great way to connect with, you know, people in hockey and fans. Up next on Kraken Home Ice, we sit down with Kraken broadcaster Allison Lucan, who liked what she saw during the team's first road trip of the season, where the Kraken picked up wins in Minnesota and Nashville. And we hear from head coach Dan Balsma on what he does on a rare day off, and he brought a special guest along with him.
Assist of the Week is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross, always in your corner. The Assist of the Week goes to new Kraken center Chandler Stevenson. Riker Evans taps it back to Stevenson, who passes to Brandon Montour. The goal marked Monty's first as a Kraken. Thursday's win against the Flyers was Stevenson's 600th game in the NHL. Whether you're watching the Kraken live from Climate Pledge Arena or from home, a huge part of the games is the broadcast. And one of the familiar faces we're used to seeing is Kraken analyst Allison Lucan. Ariel Orsuto talked to Allison about her road to the Kraken. One of my favorite things is that I always wanted to be with something from the beginning, right? And so many hockey teams have been around for decades and decades. So to have the opportunity to be with this organization from its very first days and have all the history and all the storytelling is so super special. And the fans here have embraced what I do the way I do it. So it's been a lot of fun. What you do the way you do it is a unique thing in and of itself. Obviously, you're extremely interested in the stats behind things. Can you kind of describe the, the way in which you uh, identify all the stats? Yeah, I like to call it data-driven storytelling. So it's looking at the data to measure that against what our eyes see, right? Because sometimes our eyes see something that isn't actually true. So it's kind of bringing in the data versus the eye test saying what checks out, what doesn't check out. And then most importantly, not just throwing a bunch of numbers at people, that's not exciting. We didn't come here to be in school. So telling it in the story of a play or a goal or a game or a season, that's what I really like to do. How'd you get into hockey? <laughs> I was actually not into hockey at all. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, which is a football town. Um, there was no hockey. And as a consultant, I started traveling. So I went down to Tampa, I was living in DC and I started following more and more hockey. And those funny skates that my dad had had from his high school days finally made some more sense. Those are the plays that make the plays that turn into goals. This is actually my first full-time job in hockey. So I've kind of had to scrape and claw, but every step has been very monumental and I've been appreciative and um, I can't thank the people who've helped me enough. When I was a little girl, no matter what sport I went to, I would only see girls or women if they were the entertainment or if they were working you know, at a ticket stand or doing concessions. And now we want women to see that if they want to do something, there is space and they will be supported and they will be protected. Do you think that hockey is for everyone? I think it's trying to make steps. And I think that's another reason I'm so proud to be with the Kraken is I describe it, we're trying to make our company look like the community we live in. We're really, really trying to find the right people and people who need to have the door pushed open, like assistant coach Jess Campbell says, and now we hold it open for those who come after. Kraken assistant coach Jessica Campbell has been an example to many as the first female NHL coach. She's especially an example for young girls. Last weekend at the Kraken Community Iceplex, dozens of girls got to try out hockey for the very first time. It was part of World Girls Hockey Weekend. 49 girls ages four to nine got to learn the skills of the sport on the Starbucks rink. It was just one of many try hockey for free events the team hosts. The next opportunity for kids to learn how to play hockey is on November 2nd. And this event is open to girls and boys ages four to nine. Head coach Dan Bowsma practically lives at the rink. Whether it's games, practices, or even on off days, he says he's always thinking about hockey. We sat down with the coach to talk about the team's first road trip and what he attempts to do to take his mind off hockey. Oftentimes being on the road to start the season, um, having that road trip um, where you have some tough travel, you have some tough games, um, you have an opportunity to also you know, be together as a group. It's an important time for the building of the group and I think you hope that you can have success along the way while you're um, spending that time on the road to, to galvanize the group, to bring the group together. Okay, usually on a road trip like that, especially back east, you get home in the wee hours of the morning. Probably as a coach, you want to give your players the next day off. Does the coach ever get a day off? Uh, coach gets a couple days off in the year, but, but not many. Um, you know, the tough travel, players need uh, some rest and recruit, so you, you got to turn the page and, and uh, get ready for the next one. Um, that's always the case. Um, they come fast and furious and uh, there's, no t there's no rest for the weary. You're in the middle of a home stand, you're home, you get a nice stretch. You know, this is a four game stretch for you. Uh, what do you like to do when you're not at the rink? Be at the rink. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of hockey. Uh, you know, 
it's a lot of hockey because uh, we're watching, you know, the team that we're going to play in advance. We're watching them um, still wrapping up, you know, the previous games that uh, we've played and trying to to learn and grow from what we put on the ice uh, in that previous game. And so there's it's it's always hockey. But when you get a downtime, uh, like you're going to find uh, my wife and my dog. Uh, we're going to be out on a hot walk and a hike, uh, enjoying the outdoors somewhere. Kind of, I'd say trying to get my mind away from hockey, but it will be on hockey. Why? Uh, why we? Why we're outdoors? Yeah, you do your best, you, the best you can. <laughs> yeah. But uh, fresh air. Hey, Duchess, come on in here, Duchess. You mentioned Duchess, the dog. Good Ten girl. years in your life, huh? Yeah, she's she's on the coaching staff. Yeah, <laughs> she's on the coaching staff for sure. She knows uh, she knows when it's going good. She knows when it's going bad. And, She's there for every every bit and piece. Coming up on Kraken Home Ice, tonight was the big reveal of the inaugural Hispanic Heritage Night jersey. We hear from the artist behind the jersey and where he draws his inspiration. In this week's shootout, we ask players, what's your response when an Uber driver asks you, what do you do for work? And their answers are one of a kind. Hispanic heritage was celebrated and honored tonight at Climate Pledge. As part of Kraken Common Thread, tonight was the reveal of the inaugural Seattle Kraken Hispanic Heritage Night jersey. Originally from Mexico City, the jersey designer, Victor Melendez, talks about how he blends his Mexican heritage with Pacific Northwest influences. Mi nombre es Victor Melendez y soy el artista de la herencia hispana de la temporada 24-25. I didn't grow up in the Pacific Northwest. I actually grew up in Mexico, Mexico City. My family's from uh, Oaxaca and Veracruz. Growing up, I, I think I always had an interest on, towards anything artistic. I, I used to draw a lot with my mom, like crowns. We had a big table and she would just put paper down and just draw and I was always encouraged to do that. My artistic style, well, that's... Uh, I will say it's an amalgamation of different things that influence me in life. Mexican heritage and the exposure to all those traditions and colors and food and music when I was growing up. But also a lot of influence from the Pacific Northwest, specifically the music, the culture, the food, all of that. I want people to see that uh, Mexican culture and Latin American culture in general has a lot to offer and there's a lot more to see than maybe that you're familiar with. As you can imagine, hockey players travel a lot for work, and sometimes that requires taking an Uber. In the shootout this week, we asked the players, what's your response when an Uber driver asks you what you do for a living? Uh, yeah, you go off the board with this one sometimes. Uh, you got you to read the room a little bit. Um, sometimes I'll say like volleyball player or something funny. Um, or I just say, ah, oh, just like I'm here for work. <laughs> Never the truth. I don't usually just tell them like, I work in finance or something. <laughs> I'm just here on a convention. Um, I'm a sales representative. Usually hockey player, I think. Um, I try, I mean, most of the time hockey player usually sparks a conversation because it's probably a unique one, but that's what I usually I say. I'm honest most of the time or, or I say I work at Costco. I just say I'm a student. I like to switch it up. Um, I either go like history teacher, um, astronaut, something crazy like that. Uh, visiting family. Usually I'll say hockey just to not be rude or I'll just say I'm a dog walker or something. That I'm a student. Just a business trip. <laughs> Up next, the music at Climate Pledge Arena is a huge part of experiencing a game in the deep. We talk to the man responsible for the tunes. Stay with us. When you're at a Kraken game at Climate Pledge Arena and the puck isn't in play, the music takes over. Whether it's a guest DJ, a band, or an in-house DJ, the music man in charge of it all is David Hatch. We sat down and talked with the musical mastermind about what goes into the game day curation. Whether it's a current hit or a classic that has everyone singing along, 
A lot of the music radiating throughout the deep during home games comes from the creative mind of David Hatch. I got started from my friend named Brian. Uh, Brian uh, was kind of one of those guys that just like always tried to find something new. And he came home with the turntable and uh, we just started practicing and scratching a little bit like that. And then um, we watched the movie Juice with Tupac and like learned how to scratch and stuff. And then took it from there. Fast forward 14 years and Hatch, who goes by DJ Side, is mixing for the Kraken. The local DJ from Bainbridge Island serves as sort of a wizard of music at the arena. He's in charge of the songs that go with the plays and keeping up with the energy whenever the puck isn't in play. We have a lot of songs that accompany a power play or a penalty kill or even an icing call, you know. But outside of that, the game is so fluid. The game is just always changing that it calls for different music every game. DJ side is a huge part of what makes watching a game in person so unique. We have lots of opportunities to like what people might not see on TV if, when they're in the arena is all of the music that's played during the timeouts. The music selections during the player warmups is curated by Hatch with player requests mixed in. He pulls a lot of inspiration for his playlist from the fans covering a multitude of genres. I think a lot of like the 70s and 80s sing-alongs work really, really well. I mean, Friends in Low Places, we played that a lot in year two and three, everybody sang along. Um, but I think that I would say a big 70s and 80s hit or 80s hit or like a metal song. Like, you know, Fuel by Metallica or Enter Sandman is always going to get a crowd reaction. Putting the show together is a group effort from the whole production crew. They collaborate on what songs to play and which guest DJs and bands to perform each game day with the ultimate goal of creating the best show possible for fans. The nice thing about this role and the team is that we're not afraid to just always try new things. On top of the songs you hear, DJ Side is also responsible for the sound effects like the ones you hear in the Kraken score. Pass McCanson, in front, that's hockey, baby! All those octaves and sounds that you hear are coming from over here. So like that dernier, dernier, those are actually Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit, but it's the octave of the song. Hockey has a lot of traditions, but since the Kraken are only in their fourth year, those traditions are still being cemented. One of my biggest goals is to really lock in some musical traditions with our fans. You know, the Mariners have had them, the Seahawks have them. You know, we're a new team. We're, you know, going into year four. We have traditions, we have them, but I want to, let's get some more. Even when the Kraken aren't defending the deep, there's a lot going on at Climate Pledge Arena. On Tuesday, the Sweat Tour comes to Seattle. Charlie XCX and Troy Savan are performing. Then on Wednesday, it's the Jets versus the Kraken. And on Thursday, comedian Sebastian Maniscalco is performing. A tough stretch of home games continues for the Kraken. They'll take on the Colorado Avalanche Tuesday night at Climate Pledge Arena. And that'll do it for this episode of Kraken Home Ice. You can catch us on Kong Saturday nights at 1030 and on King Sunday nights at 1135. Thank you for looking in. We'll see you next week. Kraken Home Ice is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross.